This year's Bilderberg meeting in Chantilly, Virginia should leave little doubt in the minds of viewers about the significance of the globalist chief steering committee where captains of industry, social media, heads of state and political middle managers meet to iron out the agenda for 2012 and 2013. To get more of an insight on this, we've traveled down to the south coast to Portsmouth where Infowars.com will be speaking to David Icke on the Isle of Wight to find out more about the inside global elite agenda and how they're able to control society through their plans. Um, I, I found it interesting to see an article um, recently where a uh, quite a well-known anti-war activist was asking in an article the question why do does the left in politics or the left in um, activism why does it produce thousands of people at NATO and G8 summits but hardly any at Bilderberg meetings now this 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 was a this was an important moment in many ways because it was an example again in the, in, the, in the area of the left that perception is beginning to move. Um, and it's very difficult for the left because to encompass the fact that there is a force that is controlling through left, right and centre and manipulating through left, right and centre to a, uh, a specific goal is to have to accept that probably your pretty much lifelong world view of us and them and the class struggle has been a nonsense and that actually this force works through us and them and how about this? How about this? How about this for an idea? That the us and them come together in mutual understanding that they're both pawns in the same game and then we might be able to do something about this. Because, like I think I said earlier, the class struggle, left and right, is just another version of divide and rule. And the left has vigorously refused and often ridiculed um, this whole area of conspiracy um, because yeah. its, its worldview would fall and so I mean we saw during the Bush era, the boy Bush era, um, the, 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 the um, expansion of the, the so-called anti-war movement in America um, and they were very, you know, getting louder and more vigorous in their opposition. But they had their, they had their testicles removed the moment President Obama became president. And yet he's Bush on steroids and, and, and where's the anti-war movement? What I think we, we, when we get really streetwise to what's going on, what we need to do in terms of protest, we need to start focusing on the architects. We need to start turning up and, and, and hassling and, and focusing the and protesting. And the owners. Yeah, on the, on, on the Rothschilds, on, 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 on the Rockefellers. See, see here, as we speak, um, we've got quite a summer in, in Britain because, um, of course, we've got the Olympics coming up. Um, goodness knows what's going to be planned for that maybe because um, 2012 and London uh, the Olympics has a synchronicity about it in terms of these people that um, was not difficult to see um, but we've also got the diamond jubilee of the Queen now you see if the left knew um, where the real power centre is and, and the architects around it then they would be protesting in vast numbers wherever the Queen goes and wherever the royal family goes because they are, well they're much more than this but even at this level they are massive symbols 
of the um, global control system and the families behind it. So that's where they would be. They wouldn't be protesting at Parliament against the bloody oil rags who, 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 for whom the families, uh, they're, they're just vehicles for the families to get what they want through into legislation and change in society. They're just, they're just the middle men and women, just the gophers. Management class. Yeah, and, 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 and we, really, we really should be focusing on, on the architects' family, the architects' families that, that orchestrate through these gophers. Here today, gone tomorrow, gophers, you know. I mean, we had a Home Secretary here called Jackie Smith. She was in the, in the Labour Party. And she brought, she was a minister, home office, uh, home secretary, and she brought in these changes um, which were very much part of the agenda. Then she disappeared. Oh, she's making, you know, I don't know what she's doing. I think she did a television documentary or something, but I mean, she's disappeared from the face of the earth. She's out of politics. And now we have this other uh, 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 woman in as home secretary from the Conservative Party, and she's taking it on. And then she'll go, and someone else will come in. Now, can we have a look at this? What connects these different people coming into political office, bringing in through legislation advancements of the agenda, the global agenda of human enslavement, and then disappearing? And then someone else comes in with a different name, maybe a, probably a different party, and they'll do the same and advance it some more, just like Bush becomes Obama. What is the cement? Ask yourself you know, activists of the left who dismiss this stuff. What is the cement? And it's the force that dictates through these gophers. And that's the force we need to expose and we need to um, highlight and protest. And, you know, there's people like Luke Rakowski in, um, in New York, um, who um, I like very much uh, what he does uh, in doorstepping not just the politicians, but doorstepping people like J Jacob Rothschild and Henry Kissinger and people like that, and put with a camera and putting questions to them that the mainstream media wouldn't think of asking, never mind ask, and, um, and, and therefore starting to focus on the architects rather than the oil rags. And that is what we need to do more of. We need to hassle these people. Because they're cowards, they're bloody cowards. That's why they get everyone else to do their dirty work for them. This is where we need to go, I would suggest, because not only does it directly challenge them and, 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 and hassle them, because they need to be hassled, they're trying to bloody enslave the world, our grandchildren, our children, all of it, I think they need some hassle. But at the same time, every time it's done, it exposes them and their part in it, and, and it's the shadow people we, we have to put the spotlight on. Shadow government is yeah. called by some people. Yes, and we, we, that, that doesn't mean we don't challenge the politicians as well, but that's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the families, the bloodline families behind it that we need to hassle. But the greatest thing of all, coming back, Patrick, to you know, what we were talking about a little while ago, is the greatest way that we are enslaved is by giving our power and our sense of perception of self in the world away to these families who impose it upon us by controlling, indeed from the start creating the concept of education as we know it, of politics as we know it, of media as we know it, and uh, religion as we know it, as science as we know it, all these, all these roads eventually lead to these families and, and the common theme of all of them is keep people in ignorance of who they are, the nature of reality, and once you've disconnected them from their true self, then program that fragment of self with the sense of self in the world that will suit your control system. So the powers with us, we are holding we are holding the house of cards together and we're doing it with our minds, with our perception of self in the world. And we change that, the house of cards must come down.